Fade out one. Fade in three. <laughs> Pizza Flicks Television Division presents Ida Lupino in With All My Heart. now, children, we're going to play a game outside. And I want each boy to choose a girl for a partner. Each boy chooses a girl. Do you understand that? Yes. All right, then. Now, when I clap my hands like this, you pick your partners. All right. Oh, everybody over there. That's right. Choose your girl. Quick. Get in the line over there. That's good. Well, Charles, what are you waiting for? I'm not going to play. Well, of course you are. You're the only two left. You have to be partners. It doesn't matter, Miss Sarah. All right, the two of you get in line with the others. I'm not going to. I'm not taking her for a partner. Oh, fat so. <laughs> Stop that. Don't you ever let me hear you say that again. Or any of the rest of you either. Now go on outside. Go on. All right, Charles. Outside. Come on, Nancy. Come sit down. Well, you're not really hurt, are you? Charles didn't mean it. He was just acting up. No, he meant it. And all the others laughed. We won't let that bother us, will we? Us? Sure. I'm not exactly thin, am I? No, but they weren't laughing at you. Yes, they were. Not now, perhaps, but a oh, long time ago when I was your age. The kids used to tease me, too, and call me the same silly name. Do you think I'll ever have a partner, Miss Sarah, ever? Of course you will, darling. Don't ever be afraid of that. Listen, Nancy. I told you they laughed at me, too. But that didn't mean they didn't like me. You know something? All through school and college, I, I never missed a dance or a party. All the boys wanted to take me out. I could have my pick of anyone. Anyone? Sure. Well, shall we go on outside? Sure, Miss Sarah. <laughs> neighbor. Joe. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, Sarah, don't try to make yourself beautiful for the boy next door. <laughs> We've known each other too long for that. Yeah, they're all right. Thanks. I'm oh, so glad you dropped in. I was hoping I'd get a chance to see you before you went back. But I realize your mother and father and Kathy have first claim on you. <laughs> I tried to get over it before, but you know how things are. Sure, I know. This is the first time I've ever seen your school. You like it? Oh, you've done a wonderful job, Sarah. Everybody's talking about it. Never mind about me. What about you? Do you have any idea where you're going from here? No, not exactly. South Pacific, I suppose. Oh. Well, couldn't you have gotten a deferment being a doctor? We didn't ask for one. Why? Oh, come off it, Sarah. Where do you think doctors are needed these days? Yes, I understand. You always wear a knight in armor. Oh. Now that a war's come along, why should you change? Oh, dear Sarah, I could always bring my troubles to you. Ever since I could remember, you've always been around, near, when I wanted someone. Even now, I can't think of anybody I'd rather have around. Kathy, but that's different, of course. Of course. I guess I'm upset about leaving Kathy. Wondering if she'll be here when I get back. You don't have any real doubts about that, do you? Well, I don't know. That kind of waiting... That's a lot to ask of any girl. Well, it isn't too much to ask of Kathy. 
She'll be here. Don't you worry. Thanks, Sarah. You always could make me feel better. Well, I've known you long enough. Look, I'll get my things. Why don't you walk me home and get the rest of it off your chest? Well, that's what I came for. Well? Could you come and sit a minute? Sure. As usual, you've done all the listening while I've done all the talking. Analyzing my complex self. Now it's your turn. Sarah. Yeah? Tell me something. What? Well, you seem to know so much about love and sorrow and everything. How do you know? Well, I guess I've loved and sorrowed in my time. You? Oh, now you know us fat ones can feel just as deeply as you skinny ones. There's more of us to feel, but... Oh, come on, Sarah. Drop this fat business, will you? Uh, it's not too much fun sometimes. Especially when you're a kid. You know, the first thing I remember is going through one special course of treatments after another. Different pills, new diets, more pills, more diets. Nothing worked. I was still fat. The thing that really hurts is when the other kids make fun of you. You never feel you really quite belong. Belong? Well, in school you were tops in every class. You were in every activity. Well, I had to do something to compensate, didn't I? So I became that little horror, the life of the party. You were never that to me. Wasn't I, Joe? Mm-hmm. You were the best friend I ever had. That's what I was trying to say. What do you mean? Well, I'm the friend type. You know, solid and dependable. The kind that gets a good serviceable bag for Christmas. With nice sturdy shoes, plain linen handkerchiefs. You know something? What? Ever since I was six, I wanted a china doll with blue eyes and a silk flimsy dress instead of one with braids and gingham. And then later on, I, I wanted shoes that wouldn't last. French perfumes. Maybe even a crazy hat. You know, all those silly, fragile things that make you feel like a woman. Sarah, when I come back from camp, I'll buy you the prettiest... Oh, no, Joe, please. I wasn't saying it for that reason. Don't. It wouldn't be the same. No, I guess it wouldn't. Well, I certainly sounded sorry for myself, didn't I? Now I know what it's like, honey. I really wanted to take your mind off me. You have? Sarah, I wish I'd... Hi there. Hi. May I come in? Of course. Am I breaking something up? No. I stopped by your house, Joe. Your dad said you were here with Sarah, so I came by to look for you. Well, if you just saying goodbye to the neighbors, Kathy. Well, Sarah, may we be excused, Kathy? Uh, sure, and I... I know you got a date. We'll get going. Time's running out. Goodbye, Joe. Good luck. Goodbye, Sarah. Good night, Sarah. Bye. The war years went by. 1943. 44, 45. For almost everyone, they were years of separation and tragedy. But for me, they were much the same as all other years. New classes, different children, with the same small problems. I wrote every week to Joe, and he always answered with nice, friendly letters from one old pal to another. Finally, it was over, and Joe came home to marry Kathy and resume his medical practice. About a year after their marriage, the first baby came along. Honey, where are you? Oh, I'm in here, dear. Uh, look who's come to see the son and heir. <laughs> Sarah, I'm so glad you came. Hello, Kathy. First you want to see what the chip looked like. May I? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, oh poor <laughs> What's the matter, darling? Oh, isn't he beautiful? Thank you, ma'am. Supposed to look like me. Well, everybody says so. Yeah. Oh, oh don't cry. Oh. Don't cry. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, we haven't seen you in ages. We've missed you. Well, I've been busy at the school. 
And I wanted to give you a chance to get rested up after you came home from the hospital. Listen, neighbor, when Kathy gets back on her feet, we want to see a lot of you around here. I'd like that. Oh, I'm so happy for both of you. Well, what are you going to name him? Name him? After the old man, naturally. Joe. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Another year slipped by. Joe and Kathy saw a lot of me, and I saw a lot of Joey. It was a happy relationship for me, for all of us. And I suppose it might have gone on indefinitely, but in one tragic, unforeseeable instant, it was shattered forever. That evening, I'd gone over to have dinner with Joe and Kathy. Well, the chip's in bed. But I won't guarantee you'll stay there unless you go out and say goodnight. All right, I will. What in the world do you think has happened to Kathy? Well, no woman ever went shopping and got home when she was expected. This is 7.30. She knew you were coming to dinner. Well, I'm not company. She doesn't have to rush home for me. Go on, say goodnight. She'll be here in a few minutes. All right. I'll get it, Joe. Hello? Oh, yes, he's here. Just a moment. Yes, I, I'll tell him. St. Luke's Hospital. Dr. Fane. Dr. Max Fane. Yes, he'll be right there. Well, I've given Chip his rag doll, I've given him his teddy bear, and if that doesn't hold him, what's the matter? That call was from St. Luke's Hospital, Joe. From Dr. Max Fane. Yeah, Max Fane. What did he want? It's Kathy. She was brought to the hospital unconscious. Hit by a car. You've got to get over there right away. How bad is it? Pretty bad. Stay here, will you, Sarah? Are you, Dr. Fane? That's right. Well, Kathy. It was hopeless. We did everything possible. Joe got there in time. She was conscious just before the end. Oh, no. I should be with him. No, leave him alone. Don't go up there. He shouldn't be alone now. Everyone's alone at a time like this. No matter who's with you, you're alone. Doctor. No, I'm sorry. Sit down. But I know what you're going to say. What? That I'm hugging my grief to me in a neurotic manner, unbecoming a doctor. Now, you listen to me, Joe. I didn't come here for that at all. I came because you asked me to. And because I know better than anyone else what you've gone through these last few weeks. Why you can't shake it off. You see, I know how much you loved her. Forgive me, Sarah. I'd be pretty disgusted with one of my patients who behaved like this. It's the old story. Physician, heal thyself. I can't. I understand. Well, this is what I wanted to talk to you about. Kathy asked me something. She knew she wasn't going to make it. All she could think about was Joey. How much he loved you. How wonderful you were with him. Well, she wanted you... Then why don't you do it? I had the same idea. 
Put me in charge of Joey in the house and let me run things for a while. What about your school? I have three assistants now. I can manage easily. Sarah, I'd be so grateful. Oh, be quiet. Don't you know I'd rather do this than anything in the world? Well, when do we start, boss? Thank you, Sarah. The guy's lucky, that's all I can say. Another 12 hours and he'd had a perforation. Why did they wait so long? Oh, who knows? What are you doing tonight, Joe? Tonight? Probably be in a state of collapse. Sarah's cooked up a birthday party for the chipper. She's asked all the kids in the neighborhood this afternoon. What a girl. Hey, you can say that again. Max, hmm? I've been thinking. Can I ask your advice about something? Go ahead. Well, Sarah's been looking after me, the youngster, and the house for two years now. Well, I can't expect her to devote the rest of her life to me, at least not on this basis. So what are you planning to do? Well, I was thinking of asking Sarah to marry me. That might work very well. What's stopping you? Hi. Oh, hello, Doc. What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? No house calls, emergency staff <laughs> meetings. <laughs> How long has it been since you've had a night to yourself? Uh, too long. You should have more of them. Come on, get that coat off. I'll enjoy it. Fine. Loosen your tie. Oh. Sit in that chair and relax. Well, I'm going to take care of you. Do you really want to? I'm going to fix you a nice drink right now. What did you say, Joe? I said, do you really want to take care of me? What do you mean? I was wondering if you'd like to take the job permanently. Joe. We've been pals from way back. I guess we're both lonely. We might be very good for each other. You mean you... You want me to marry you? Is it that bad? Oh, Joe. You never know what this means to me. Well, from the time we were kids, from grade school on, I've been in love with you. Sarah, wait a minute. I've got to get this straight. I've got to be honest with you. Terribly fond of you. I admire you more than anybody in the world. I love you. That doesn't mean being in love with you. No. I understand, though. It's still all right with me. Come on, you two. Have some more brownies. Mm -hmm. uh, uh What do you mean, uh-uh? Sarah, you're feeding him too well. <laughs> How can I help? He only rates the best. He's got the best of everything. And Sarah, can I have just one more? Listen, you've had just one more three times in a row. Let's see how fast we can get upstairs tonight and get undressed, huh? Say goodnight to Daddy. Good night, Dad. Good night, Uncle Max. Good night, Teddy Bear. <laughs> Come on. On the double. That's the boy. Up the stairs. Fast. Oh, I can't catch up with you. Oh, Uncle Lance, Sarah. Boo. Hi, Uncle Lance. Hi, Joey. Hi. Look what I've got. What have you got? Hi, Sarah. Hello, Matt. Bang, bang, bang. Oh. <laughs> Looks like you folks had a real Christmas. Oh, he had a wonderful one. Hey, Joey, would you like to take your toys upstairs for a little while? Yeah. I want to talk to Uncle Max. Bye, sir. Yeah. Come on, sit down, Max. My nurse said you'd call. There's nothing wrong, is there? Oh, no. You didn't ask me to stop by just to look at the tree, did you? No, I certainly didn't. Well, what then? Max, I think we're going to have a baby. Sarah. Oh, that's wonderful. What does Joe think? Well, I haven't told him yet. You see, I want to be sure. Are you by any chance asking me to be your doctor? 
Yes, please. If you don't mind. I'd be delighted. Really, you have no idea how happy this makes me. And Joe, it's going to be great for him, too. You really think so? I know so. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> Take a look at this, will you? That's pretty. Oh, Max, no, it isn't pretty, and you know it. But it's one of Joe's presents to me. Look at it. Big, serviceable, and dependable. And I don't blame him. Now, wait a minute, Sarah. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be talking this way. But I am a woman, Max. No matter how I look. And that's why I want this baby so very much. Do you understand? I want this to be my gift to Joe. The best and the most beautiful I can give. Something wrong? No, you're all right. Come on now, don't play doctor with me. You're all right, Sarah, and I don't get any ideas. Let's put it this way. The fact that it's happening two weeks early may give us a little complication. Nothing serious, but still not quite what I was expecting. Baby will be all right, won't it? Yes. Maybe a little tougher on you than we thought, though. I don't care how tough it is. Just see that I have this baby, Max. That's what I mean, Joe. I'm just the friend type. Ever since we were children, I've been in love with you, Joe. You always were a kind of knight in armor. When I was six, I wanted a china doll with blue eyes and a lovely silk dress. The fragile things that would make me feel like a woman. Max, I got here as soon as I could. How is she? Is she all right? You're pretty excited even for a new father. Max, I'm asking you, is she all right? She's all right. So is the baby, a little girl. Sarah is all right. Yes, she's weak, but she's out of danger. Well, no point in going in, Joe. She's still under sedatives. Come back later. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Joe. You all right? Sure. Have you seen her yet? Is she beautiful? Very beautiful. Right now, the only thing I can think of is that you're all right. Nothing's happened to you. Sarah, Sarah. I never knew how much I needed you. How much I loved you. It's been there a long time, I guess, but I never knew. Well, believe me, I know now. Do you really mean it, Joe? It's for you. Just a pair of old shoes. Lupino will return in a moment. Next week, your host will be the Singer Sewing Machine Company.
Now you can do zigzag stitching automatically on all three types of new Singer sewing machines, straight, slant, and of course, swing needle. Because now Singer brings you the Singer Automatic Zigzagger. Attached to the new straight and slant needle singers, it works automatically with these amazing stitch patterns. Just select the one you want, slip it on here, and there's your stitch. See the Singer Automatic Zigzagger demonstrated at your Singer Sewing Center tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Four Star Playhouse and all the members of the Bristol Myers organization, thank you so much for being with us tonight. We do hope you enjoyed our play and that you'll be with us again next week. Good night. Tonight's play was brought to you by Bristol Myers, makers of Bufferin, the modern pain reliever that acts twice as fast as aspirin. New formula Ipana toothpaste with WD-9, best tasting way to fight decay. And new greaseless Vitalis hair tonic with wonder-working B7. Mm -hmm.